Hey peeps, welcome back to my channel and to the next episode of my series UI Table View, the ultimate tutorial. In this episode, we are going to learn crucial stuff. For example, let's have a look. We have a um, table view, we have cells, we have images loading asynchronously, we have a beautiful spinner, and when we scroll back up, we will have images super fast um, loaded again. So we are going to load images asynchronously. We will solve a, a race condition problem. We will solve uh, image caching, which is just six lines of code, which is super cool. And we will beautify our uh, loading with a spinner. So let's dive right into it. The last, the last, last thing we have left, or the last thing we've done is actually an own Amiibo UI table view cell, right? And what we, what I like to do is to create a custom UI image view that is capable of loading its images from the internet. So that means we will create a new file and call it custom image view, import UI kit and have our class custom image view inherit from UI image view. Having all the properties and then UI image view has but now learning the capability or getting, earning, gaining the capability of loading or load image from a URL that gets passed into here. All right, so firing a request is as simple as creating a task. So URL session, session, let's get that one, shared data task and using the URL to fire a request to that URL and what we get passed into our closure after the request is done is a res data response and error. All we care about here is about data because inside data we will eventually get our image. So let's make sure our data isn't nil. So guard let data data and if it's not nil we also want to uh, right away use the data to create a, an image of type UI image. So new image is UI image initialized based on data, just like that. Else, uh, if that didn't work out, so let us know that you couldn't load image from URL and then which URL was it. And then early return. We can even do it a little bit more prettier by doing that. So it's more, um, oh, wait a second. A let is missing here. So that, just like that. I like, I prefer, I mean, personal preference, how you write it. All right, so we got the task and it's done. So we want to assign our image, which we are having down here to our local property image so new image and then afterwards and what, what i want to not afterwards but we will want we want to like we're defining a tail a task here assigning the task to a local variable and then we are executing the task with calling resume on it now what we are doing here is we are actually manipulating your uh, user interface in a closure that gets executed at some point in the future right so that might very or it's very likely it's in the background thread we have to make sure it's hap that like the signing of the new image is happening in a for like in a main thre main thread i was just about to say foreground thread in the main thread because ui user interface manipulation should happen on the main thread always so making sure that we are on the main thread by calling dispatch queue main async and inside here putting just self image is equal to new image. Cool. All right, we got our custom image view. Let's go to our custom Amiibo cell and replacing the UI image view with our custom image view. And we don't really have to change anything else since it's an image view just with a new function. And um, I know that we have a red background. We can just command that out for the image view and run our app and have a look. Before we had a table view with red squares as a placeholder. Now we should have slowly our 
cells loading with images? No, we don't because we're not calling the function yet. So let's go to the amiibo list view controller and here whenever we are dequeuing a, a cell, we are setting values and we want to fire that function that will eventually set the image once the request is done, right? So where do we get the URL from? If we look into the amiibo, let's go here and do amiibo, into the amiibo struct, we see that there's an image property of type string. And if we look at the JSON, what this string will actually contain, it's a URL. All right, so the property image is having our URL we are looking for. Let's create a URL based on that string. So gordlat URL is an instance of URL based on string, getting it out of the amiibo image. And um, not gordlat, but iflet, because if that worked out, we can't trust the API. We don't know whether there will always be a proper URL or maybe a different string that just is mal. Um, no, not malfunctioning, but malformed. So we just make sure here that URL really is a URL and uh, the, initiali the initializing um, is, not uh, is not resulting into nil. So when it's not nil, we can say safely say amiibo cell, your image view, which is capable of loading an image based on a URL. Let's fire that request or firing uh, the image load. If we run that app now, we should have for each cell an own image based on a URL for each amiibo. Beautiful. Now there's our first challenge we will face now. If we scroll down, we will see that there are older images that are slowly getting replaced by newer images. Right? That's weird. So what is happening here? I've prepared something. And you don't have to really be able to read what's written on here. It's just for visualization. That's the table view. That's it. That's the cell. Now, when we are having our cell and we are scrolling it out of the view, yes, we know we are dequeuing it and we are reusing it. But by reusing it, we really have the instance, the former instance at this point when we are dequeuing it. So what I mean by that is it has the former properties and its values like Mario, the game series Super Mario, and the image of the former cell. So when we have let's let's scroll back up to the very top. When we have super when we have Mario up here, right? And it's scrolling out of the view and getting into the view, at the point of that, it has still the image and the name and the game series assigned. And at this point at line 56 and only at line 63, we are overriding these values by new values based on whatever index we are at the in our array. So with the new name, let's say we have we are scrolling Mario out of the view and we're getting into the view browser wedding. So we're overriding Mario, we are overriding the game series, and then we are not overriding the image, but we are firing a new request that will at some point override the image. Right? So that's why we're seeing the former image of the former instance for a couple of seconds or actually milliseconds and then it gets overwritten by the actual um, finishing request that is um, downloading the new image. That's why we see the former image before the new image actually or the right image is displayed. Let's solve that. So going to our load image, whenever we are loading an image, before we do that, we will just make sure and set the image to nil. Right? So whenever that function gets called, we're setting the image to nil, just in case there was an image assigned before or not. We don't care. We're just setting it to nil because we know at the end of that call, there will be a new image assigned. So let's run that and have a look. If we now have a look and all the images are loaded and then we scroll, we should see there are no former images. Right? There are no former images, they are always white and then they get their new images assigned. So that's solved. But there's another issue now. We have a race condition. And what I mean by that is, so currently when we scroll fast enough, we will see it. If we scroll fast enough, 
this image is not right, it's still not right, it's still not right. You see, there, get, there are images like happening one after another. What is that? So that is basically, we're having our cell, we are having um, our image loaded, it gets dequeued, and like we're scrolling super fast, it gets dequeued, it sets its new values, like new name, new game series, it fires off a new request to set the new image, but we're scrolling so, and then we're scrolling, and before that request finishes, we are dequeuing that same cell again, like we are dequeuing, dequeuing 20 cells by scrolling a, a whole view up, and we're dequeuing the same cell again, that already has a request fired but not finished yet, and we are setting new values, new name, new um, new game series, and then also firing a new request because there's a new image to be set. Now we have two requests that are in the background running, and maybe we are still scrolling that fast that we are doing it once again, and then we have a third uh, request fired, and then we don't know which few requests will finish first. Maybe we are lucky, and then they will finish, like the first request will finish first, and then a second, second, and a third, third, but we don't know. Maybe the third image is the smallest one, and it will um, and therefore the request will finish first, so we have the correct image displayed uh, immediately, and then the first Im uh, request finishes, then we have the wrong image displayed afterwards, and then the second request finishes, and then we have again one Im a, a wrong image um, displayed at the very end, and it will stay then like that. And that's not what we want, right? So that's why you see when you scroll super fast, the same cell gets re uh, dequeued like three times, four times, and then all the requests that we fired are slowly finishing and overriding that image one after another. So if we are unlucky and scroll super, super fast to the very top, let's see whether we get Super Mario. That's super fun. Do we get Mario? Well, that's us actually. Oh, we have Link. That's cool. There's Zelda. There's Mario. Right. So, so let's solve that. Inside here, every time we fire that function, we are creating a new um, local variable with a task um, or a new variable and assign a task to it and then firing that task. Then we are firing that function once again, uh, creating another variable with a new task and in each of these tasks, right, in each of these tasks we have a self-reference to that instance, right, there are then, for example, if we fire it three times, we have three different tasks running in the background, referencing the same self image property of that your image view and setting the image at some point. So what we want to do is have actually a global task of URL session data task. And that is something I haven't seen online uh, anyone documenting or showing. So that's, that's why it's crucial what we're learning here. And we are globally de declaring a task and assigning the data task whenever we fire that function um, or overriding the former task. Now that is not solving the issue yet, but what we're going to do is we're actually going to, before we are assigning a new task, we are going to make sure that we are canceling the task um, that, is maybe run, that maybe runs, still runs from, from before. Now here's a small catch. This is an optional value. We cannot call cancel on an optional task. Uh, why is that optional? Well, imagine on the first, or remember when you initially, initially load the table view, like on the very first time, right? You open the app, the table view gets loaded, all the cells are created, like the, the call in the amiibo list uh, view controller, DQ reusable cell will do two things. Either it is dequeuing a cell that is reusable or it will create a new instance of a cell, a fresh instance, complete fresh instance with no values whatsoever if there is no cell to be dequeued. At the very initial um, launch of your table view, app and table view, there are no dequeuable decu cells. Therefore, it will create 20 fresh instances. If you create 20 fresh instances of a table view cell, um, each of these table view cells is having um, these the, that uh, an, a, an own unique image view, right? An instance of an own unique image, uh, image view. And all of these unique image views of each of these cells is having a um, property called task. So, and this is nil at this point, at the initial load, right? At, at this point here, it's nil. 
because it's it's just created it just created a new table view cell and at the at this point down here when we are actually like assigning values to the cell and then uh, firing the function then we are having um then we are fi yeah we're firing the function of the image view then we are still the task is still nil we are the first time inside here so we cannot call ta cancel on task so we have to make sure it's not it's not nil by if let task equals task so only if it's not nil we will call cancel and uh, in case it's nil it will not execute cancel and it will actually assign a task the first time to it and then execute it and then after the initial load then we when we then when we start scrolling yes we're dequeuing yes we are assigning new name new game series and yes we are firing load image a second time for that instance and then in that case uh, there was a task assigned before so that therefore if let task equals task will actually be executed and just to be um, on the safe side it will cancel the task whether it's running or not because it could also be that you have um, loaded the table view and the image is already set so there is no task running and then you dequeue and you fire the function load image and it will just cancel the task just in case and then it will override the former task with the new task with the new image that we want to load right so that will solve that problem all right let's have a look let's run it and see that we actually don't have the issue anymore that images are loaded one after another for the same cell weirdly and just like scroll down super fast and everything just loads perfectly as it should everything is just at its place it is daisy it is toad toad tot it is mario it's not toon link and then zelda and then mario it's immediately the right image awesome now there's uh, let's do another cool stuff uh, another another cool st uh, thing that is image caching it's just six lines of code it's super easy let's get into it so for image caching and, and why we are doing it be is because we are re-downloading images every time we scroll and that's unnecessary we have downloaded link already archer version and if we scroll up and down again why are we downloading it once again so what we're going to do is we are creating an a global cache a global image cache which is an ns cache and has anybody and any whoops no 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 any object and anybody it has anybody yes it makes sense any object any object and then what we are going to do is when whenever we are we are finished with our um, uh, request and we have the image we want to set the image into the cache uh, with a unique um, identifier. So image cache and then set object and we want to set our image. And what is the unique key we want to use? Actually, we can use the URL because each URL is, is unique for the image, right? Each URL would just uh, load one single image. It's always the same image for that URL. So we can use the URL whoops url absolute string as a key and we have to cast it to any object to be able to use it as a key so we have just stored it in in the cache once we have downloaded the image and then we are assigning it now we want to also uh, implement that we are accessing the image from the cache or actually checking is there an image in the cache for that url Let, let's say we are um, calling that function passing a url into here and then we want to actually check for that URL, is there an image in cache? If yes, please assign that image to the proper, to the local property image and then early return and don't ever even go near this um, request execution because we are not needing it anymore. And if, it's, if there's no image in the cache for that URL, well then go on and execute the request and please download it and then at the end set that you image into the cache for that URL. All right, long story short, what we are going to do is we're going to do a if let image from cache and then using the image cache to get an object for a key. Which key was it? It was the URL absolute string as an any object. So what we're getting back here is an 
object type, if we go here and see what it returns, it is an object type. But we know for that key that we have stored an UI image, right? We have stored new image, which is of type UI image at, the, at that key. And now we are retrieving with that key that kind of object. So we can securely say uh, we are casting that object type into a UI image. And if that does not result into nil, which will happen if there is no image for that key in the image cache. Um, so if it's not resulting into nil, then we can safely say, okay, we're assigning that image from cache, whoops, image from cache to our local property image. And then only return because we don't want to execute then the download um, story. All right, uh, we don't need to make sure that we are on the main thread because we still are. This is no asynchronous call or so. This is just uh, accessing the cache, um, casting it, and then assigning or actually, yeah, assigning the image from the cache to our local property image. Let's run that. Let's run that and see that we are, when we are uh, scrolling up and down, that we are having our images. Well, initially it downloads the images. And then if we scroll down, yeah, it downloads all the images. But if we scroll back up, it should just immediately display it because getting the images from the cache should be super fast. And that's what it is. It's super fast, it's super smooth. That's awesome. And it really was just six lines. We have one, two, three, four, five, if that counts, six lines. And that's image cache. Let's have a something, let's have our spinner implemented, our beautiful spinner to when we are scrolling and we see a white place uh, or white space that it's displaying a spinner instead. So it's a better user experience. Now what we are going to do is we are defining for our image view a spinner and it is a UI activity, activity indicator, um, indicator view and then with the style gray. Let's have a function called add spinner that will add the spinner. So add the, a sub view and we want to add our spinner as a sub view. Let's put some constraints to the, to the, to our spinner, which is um, center on the Y axis constraint to, let's center it on the Y and the X axis, X axis. So we are centering it vertically true i've forgotten the translate authorizing mask into constraints to false spinner center x anchor is constrained to the center x anchor is active true and then we want to start start animating our spinner okay that's how we add the spinner uh, when do we want to add it? Actually, whenever we are setting the image to nil, because we're just about, like, right? We are just like setting it to nil because we know we want to then uh, set a new image either from cache or from the web, freshly downloaded. So when we are, whenever we are setting it to nil, we know we are just about to do something that maybe takes time. So just add the spinner here. So add the spinner. And um, let's run that. Let's see what is happening here. Oops, not a, Y, X, Y and X. So if we run that, we should see that there's a spinner and then the images are loaded. Oh, that looks great. Does it? Well, if you take a closer look, the spinner is never removed. We have the image and we have still the spinner in our image. Let's fix that. When do we want, oh yeah, let's just have a function that is called remove spinner. Skinner, and that all it does is actually, we are calling on spinner remove from, remove from super view. It's so easy, that's so cool. When do we want to remove the spinner? Well, whenever we are assigning the image, right? Because then we are, then we are done. So let's uh, remove the spinner, remove spinner. Uh, actually, I think we don't need the self-reference here either and also, nor does we do we need it here. But in the closure, when we are assigning it, we will need remove spinner. Um, and that's it. If we run that, we should see a spinner. And once the image is set, the spinner should be removed. 
there we go. Spinner loads, spinner is removed. Loads is removed. If we scroll back up, yep. Okay, if what you are seeing here is uh, something that you don't have to worry about, that we're if we scroll uh, fast enough, let's say we're scrolling, you see some white spaces, right? You see some um, white space in between, and then it slowly gets loaded. Did you see it? For example, we have we have scrolled past that, but still it's not loaded, right? So it's not it's not a bug. It's basically what's happening is uh, we are scrolling so fast that we are having a new cell. We are firing that we are firing that task to load the image, scrolling so fast that we are dequeuing it, canceling that before it finished, before it actually the first time loaded the image and set it into the cache. And we are at a different, like way down a point in our table. And then um, we load the image and then when we scroll back up, it gets dequeued and then it fires the task again because it never really found the image in the cache because it wasn't ever saved there in the first place. That's why we see sometimes um, white um, or actually the spinner is still, although we scrolled by. Um, so don't worry about that. It is just, um, you will have to have the image finished loading while watching the cell, right? While having it in the view. And that's basically the episode. You have learned how to asynchronously load an image, solve the race condition, as well as add a spinner and also load your image from cache. If that video was helpful for you, hit like, also hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future episodes and let me know in the comment section your feedback, whether you have understood everything or whether you have to rewatch it or whether I have to go into detail um, on some parts that uh, really wasn't that uh, easy to understand. In the description box, there are two links at least, like one link to my Instagram, you can join me on Instagram, I'm super active there. Also, there's a link to Patreon, you can support me doing YouTube full time and multiple times a week by going on Patreon and downloading every source code of every video, selecting the right tier. Other than that, I hope you have a great time and see you next time. Bye.